Jeff Snyder here for Collider, and I'm sitting down with the team behind The Novice, which premieres at the Tribeca Film Festival this week. We have writer, director, and editor Lauren Hathaway, and stars Isabel Furman and Delone. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. So, Lauren, you know, with these festival films where the public doesn't really know what they're about, you know, there's there's no trailer out yet or anything. Why don't you tell the folks at home sort of, you know, what this movie is, is all about and, and where it came from? It sort of follows an obsessive collegiate rower who, who's trying to climb the ranks of her, her cutthroat team. And for me, I based it on my own, um, you know, it's a sports film, but it's not a sports film. It's a film about grit and ambition. And it's inspired by my own uh, years as a collegiate rower. And I essentially took four years of, of that experience and 10 years of coming of age and pushed into this film and tried to make a really visceral kind of bizarre um, experience to to really show the audience, put them in the scenes so that they know what it feels like and connect with like what it means to be obsessed with something, whether or not they've wrote, which is probably 99.9% of people who will ever watch this film, so. <laughs> so you're a former rower yourself. How, how much of this like was based on what you went through in your own experience and how much was sort of, you know, em embellished from the imagination though? Everything that you see happening in terms of the injuries or the team dynamics or the whatever, the, all the, the bad stuff that happens, I've, those happen to me, they happen to someone on the team or they've happened to people I've talked to. You know, when I was making this film um, and talking to the people, I talked to an Olympian, uh, Olympic rower, and she was telling me stories about the infected blisters and the things like that. And when she told me that, I was like, holy fuck, like that's extreme. Like you're pushing yourself so far that you literally might kill yourself doing a sport. Like this is the thing that happens and rowers are obsessed, they're neurotic. You're doing the same thing. Uh, on loop, staring at the back of someone's head over and over and over and over. It takes a type of person. Um, and so that for me, you know, I, I wrote in sort of my, I was obsessed with it. I wrote in, you know, four years of that sort of experience. This was my catharsis writing this. And over the two years between the first draft and when we shot the film, as my life happened, I would write in various life events, personal events, um, breakups, things like that, and really try to, uh, you know, milk the film for everything. And, um, deal with my own uh, life, I guess. And so, uh, Isabel, what were you sort of, uh, what, what attracted you to the project? Was it the physical challenge? I mean, were, were you looking for something like this at this point in your career? I definitely feel like that was a huge part of it. I had been thinking for so many, for such a long time, I was like, I want to do like a movie where I play a superhero, but not like a typical superhero. And I really feel like in a sense, I got the, the whole like transformation aspect. Um, with this movie and got to be like a rowing superhero. But what really kind of attracted me to it was once I read the script um, and I, I said this in an earlier interview that I didn't even realize this until Lauren and I had been together in person like recently uh, that I was so um, caught by the emotion of going after a goal and having a very specific idea in mind of what I wanted to achieve by a certain age. I, from the time that I was about 14 to 19, as a, like in the acting industry, I had so many ideas of like where I wanted to be in my career at 16 and wanted to have this kind of role when I was 18. And I wanted to have this kind of award when I was 20. And it's like, I felt like I was closing in on myself and really kind of losing, um, like social aspect of my life. Uh, I was so set on achieving this goal. And when I read the script, I didn't, I didn't even realize that subconsciously that's what attracted me to play Alex. Um, and Lauren was the one who saw that in me, which is probably why she cast me. <laughs> um, but I, I taped my audition for, for the movie and I picked another scene that I remember reading in the script and feeling like I just understood exactly what Lauren was trying to say in that scene and covered myself in sweat and, <laughs> and, and everything to make up to make myself look like I was like exhausted. And uh, I wrote Lauren a letter then afterwards telling her why she had to pick me for this role and that nobody else could play this part but me. And I think she saw not only that part of me that connected with Alex, but also somebody so obsessive enough that I went so far above and beyond what I was supposed to do just because I really wanted it. You know, I, I'm curious about the, the letter and, and Delona, I have a question for you uh, in, in just a second, but Lauren, do, do letters like that sway you or is it all about what shows up on camera in the audition? I'm genuinely curious. 
Um, it's 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 both because I wasn't the only letter that I got, and I appreciate if I give them, I read them absolutely a hundred percent. But if the person's not right for the part, they're not right for the part. But it was like she did the scene that one of the you know I had given to the thing was I had given two scenes to the casting directors, and I only found out later I only got one scene back on all the actors, and that they had only sent out one scene. But Isabel intuitively had chosen the second scene that I wanted to see, and she the, the scene that I had given half the people like misinterpreted it. She had that reading right, she had everything, and like. I was telling the story. Isabel first hated the story, but I think now she's come around to it, I think, over. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, when it comes to casting, this is my first rodeo. And I really try to rely on and study the career and advice of other directors. And I saw the screening with um, David Fincher and he said something after the interview where he said, when he casts someone for a role, he really tries to understand who the person is at their core. Because at the end of a 12 hour day, Ben Affleck is not Batman, he's Ben Affleck. And right, so, and so when it came to cast Isabel, she did all these other, her auditions were superb. And then she did all these other things. And then I meet her in, in real life and she's got this fucking binder and these little tabs and all these different things and like this energy of Batman. She's very peppy. She's not like this murderous uh, child actor. <laughs> We know her from believe it or not she doesn't kill people so i when I met her energy was like oh my god she's so like not crazy but she is in a different sort of way and she has this drive and intensity and it really um i don't know i mean she she was right and the letter just added to it and what she wrote in the letter about running from la to las vegas and having an injury and all this stuff it was just like the combination of all of it uh, Delone, you play Isabel's TA in the film, who, who sort of, you know, strikes up a, a relationship with her. What did you see in the script that made you want to make the transition from model to actress? Yeah, well, you know, I've been modeling uh, like last seven years of my life. And so I had been studying acting for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And I've been I was looking for a role that like really spoke to me for a while. And I didn't want to just do anything. And when I got this audition, I was so excited because it was like everything I wanted. You know, I'm a queer woman of color and I got to be a lesbian that is really smart. You know, she gets into the college of her own choice. She plays a teacher's assistant and um, she's creative and she's, you know, you know, just as ambitious as Alex, but in like a really healthy way. And you also get to, you know, see the softer sides of Alex while we're together um, because um, I have this nurturing aspect. So I felt like the role was really relatable um, for my first role and also something that would still be challenging and new. And um, I just thought uh, when I found out like Isabel was doing it, I was so excited. And then Lauren being um, this queer woman as well, I was like, I was still on board. And do, do you see any parallels between modeling and rowing in terms of what it takes to succeed? There's definitely this obsession. And like, in regards to this, like it's really easy for you to be like, I gotta be the best and I'm, I'm gonna do it like this. And you kind of just like, you can become a little self-absorbed and like, just like think about what it is that you need to achieve rather than thinking about the bigger picture or like the entire production. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I can definitely see similarities and. I mean, I couldn't take my eyes off of Alex when I was watching the film. I was just like, oh my God, I, I, I related to it so much. Uh, and, and Isabel, as a young actress in this business, I mean, have you ever felt like you had to push yourself to the extremes that, that Alex does in this film in order to get a role? In order to get a role, you know, it's funny. I feel like I've been really fortunate that the, the, the roles that have come my way um, very often it's like one or two auditions and the people that I, I audition with know the ones that I've like really, you know, multiple auditions, long process. I never get those jobs, which is so funny. And I think it's because intuitively people know when they meet someone, you click with that person, with that person's energy. And if they are what you're looking for in your script, it's like, well, there's nobody else. It's like, this is what fits and this is what works. Um, but I, you know, I felt like even in this process of preparing for this movie, I really felt like I was like, the lines were so blurred in terms of like, where was Isabel and where was Alex? I mean, I was waking up at five in the morning and rowing for three hours. And then I had like an hour to sleep and eat something. And then I was rowing again for another like two, three hours as we were getting closer to filming because I rowed every single scene in the movie. I didn't have a double for that. So I had this intense pressure on myself. I mean, I was messaging Lauren. I was like, I can't get this thing right. And it's just bothering the hell out of me because I was like, I have to look convincing. I have to look like I could be the person that makes it to the top of the boat. And if I don't, I can't achieve that, then no one's going to believe the whole movie. And uh, I felt like at the end of those like rowing days, I would go work with a 
physical trainer, my friend Beck Wilcock trained me for the movie for two hours and I would do weights with her. And then I'd have auditions and meetings and things at the end of the day. And I remember like the lines were so blurred. I had no idea what day it was. I was like sleeping and rowing and eating. And that was it's essentially it. And when I got on set, I was like, wow. I was like, I really feel like I've found this character. And as much as I like had done like prep, like Lauren said, my binder with like all of these tabs, like really the most, that I connected with her was in the water on the boat being in that kind of mode of like learning something new and having to learn as fast as I could because I really felt this pressure of like I had to be the best on set <laughs> even though we were rowing with like people who actually knew what it was like I really felt like I had to be the best because I had to look convincingly enough that I could be the best um and I really learned a lot <laughs> during this preparation for this movie I can imagine. I mean, uh, Lauren, I was going to ask about that. The other girls who, who, who populate the team, um, were those, you know, collegiate rowers, people who had experience or, or were they, you know, actors who you just sort of trained up? Um, the only other, everyone was a real rower aside from Amy, who plays Jamie. She also had her own little uh, boot camp. She was shooting a film at the time and was like on her days off. She would be at the boathouse basically rotting there all day like Isabel doing her own thing. <laughs> Um, but then everyone else, we had a casting director local to Toronto, it was great, went to every single, uh, every single boathouse in a two hour radius, was like talking to people going out there five in the morning. We got a ton of like uh, improv auditions, called it down from there, then we did auditions that way. Then the girls who were chosen, we did like a little acting uh, workshop with them. Uh, and um, yeah, so everyone that you see in the film, they, they did their rowing, they're real rowers. And uh, hopefully, you know, that people who do row can sense that and sense the sort of intensity. And, we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. I mean, Amy and I, as much as we worked hard and trained hard, like the complication of setting a boat with three people, four people, eight people, like we needed those girls with us because <laughs> those boats would have flipped like a million times a day. We were constantly just like so grateful to have them because not only were they exceptional rowers, but they were wonderful, wonderfully game to like play and do this and like, to row back and forth the same way all day, which is something as an actor you used to, but if you're, you know, physically exercising, I remember the first time they were like, what do you mean we're going again? And I was like, we're gonna be doing this all day. <laughs> we're gonna be doing this all day. <laughs> Well, I, I really like that scene too, where you, where you go up to the front of the boat because it shows how claustrophobic it is and how it's like, there's no uh, leaving the boat. Like you, you are a team and you are there all day. Um, I, I just, I just thought that, uh, ha having played team sports, it was an interesting dynamic. Um, it felt like that when we were filming, if we had to go to the bathroom, we would just <laughs> lean out the side. <laughs> what else are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> um, Lauren, I wanted to ask how you even got to this, this point, because, uh, you know, I understand that you started out as like a dialogue and an ADR editor working in sound. So, so how do you get this chance to direct your own feature? Um, it's funny, you know, I saw when I was 15, I, I, before I've always been writing, I've always been making my own little films. I was 15 though, I saw Kill Bill for the first time and it blew my mind. And I knew at that moment I wanted to be a director. Fast forward three years and I get to college and all these guys with all their camera, I was, there were very few women on the team, immediately imposter syndrome hit, but you know, I loved editing then discovered sound, fell into that. No one else was really doing it. Decided I wanted to do a sound career. I come to LA, I didn't know where to start. I was like, I don't, there's no direction. And so I set a goal to work with Tarantino and I worked backwards and eventually did. And when I was 25, I worked with Tarantino, I worked on a Tarantino film and that was a dream come true for me. And I think it really gave me the confidence um, that my other career successes around that time to like, you know what, I can write and direct. I have stories I want to tell. I'm ready to tell them. I'm ready to be sort of honest and open and, and talk about these things with people. Cause I, before, you know, now I'm pretty uh, wearing bright red shirts and whatever doing my thing, but before I was very kind of closed off and sort of robotic and um, isolated from the world. So I don't think I was ready to, to really write and, and be true and whatever. And so then I wrote the script, you know, when you, when I made this goal November, 2016 to transition into writing and directing within five years, I wanted to, I studied the careers of directors I've admired, Damien Chazelle, I really admire his career. I love what he did with Whiplash and like making a film that only you can tell a story only you can tell. And that was his film. And then I sent the script to, um, my Ryan, who came on as a producer, he, I went to college with him. Uh, we both went to SMU and he came on board and I found another producer through uh, the Blacklist, like the site where you host scripts. I, these two guys are totally different. I like linked them up. They joined together, joined forces, the best of both worlds. And then 
started pitching in now. And over the next two years, it slowly kind of came together. And in that time too, I really try to use, you know, dialogue editing and, and ADR. People don't even know what that is. It's not very sexy, but you're basically in a room with like the actors re-recording lines for noise or they, you're an action movie. You have to rewrite the entire film later to explain it because it's changed or whatever. And so I got to spend a lot of time <laughs> in the room with some really amazing directors and actors. And a lot of times directors can't be in the ADR room. They don't want to be in the ADR room. No one really loves it. And so it gave me a lot of opportunity to work with actors in that way. And so I tried to really observe and learn and spend time talking to directors and, and just sponging it all up. So when it came time to shoot the film, you know, I had no idea what I was doing, but I don't think anyone does actually, which is the beautiful thing that you learn when you start working in this industry. We're all just kind of faking it. I think that's adulthood. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, D Delone, uh, I have not yet caught up with Halston, but it is at the top of my screening queue on, on Netflix. I know you play Pat Cleveland on that show. Can you talk to me about your experience on that project and prepping to play a real life model? I got uh, Pat after I did um, The Novice and they actually came, they were looking for real models. So it, they didn't go through my, um, my acting agency and they went to my modeling agency at the time, DNA. And they said they're looking for models. And my agents were like, well, if you want someone that can spin and tour like Pat, then you, you have to take DeLong. So I actually have worked with Pat a ton and I, I, I know her family pretty well. And, you know, they, they wished me well. And they were said that they were excited to see me playing her. She, for me, is such an icon and I'm, I'm so inspired by her. Before I even got the role, like before even knowing about it, I would have people sending me um, really old uh, videos of her on the runway saying like, like, this is you. Oh my God, like this was your era. You should have been in this era. So I kind of felt like I manifested this in a way. Um, she's so dreamy and colorful and the way she talks about art and fashion. And, you know, um, the director gave me her autobiography. So I read her. Her, her book and I got to learn more about her um uh and you know there's really a story there and I'm, I'm hoping like maybe a spinoff of Pat Cleveland or something because because there's there's she's just so wonderful I could I could see it um I, I I'm definitely going to check out Halston before the end of the month I, I've heard great things about it um uh, Isabel I know I know you are reprising your breakout role as Esther in, in Orphan First Kill uh I'm curious you know what can you tease uh, about that prequel and I don't know maybe how like Julia Stiles fits into the story this time around well it's definitely not what I think most people will expect which I think is really exciting and what really drew me to even coming back to playing that role and I think also what I think is most exciting about it is it's something that's never been done cinematically there's never been an adult actress who's reprised a role that she played as a child and that was exceptionally difficult and really fun to do because when I was a kid and I played Esther I was constantly playing a 33 year old <laughs> but hiding herself as a kid while I was also 10 and this time I was like oh well here's a little weight off my shoulders I just have to pretend <laughs> to be 10 <laughs> I was like this is I'm already an adult so there we go um but kind of like what Lauren said, you know, fake it till you make it, <laughs> you know, I just was like, it, it was really cool to be back on that set. I think people will be shocked by the story. It's very different than um, what most people would expect. And Julia is just absolutely incredible in it. And uh, we had a lot of fun making the movie together. It's definitely more of a story about the two of us and our relationship um, and kind of Esther's way that she came to the United States and how she found herself there. So it's very exciting. You're an associate producer on that project. Do, we, do you have any idea of when it, it might be released? They're saying very soon. I mean, we, we're very, very excited about it. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, also, it's just very trippy because I, again, like seeing things and seeing myself as like a kid again is very, very trippy. So I've kind of still been like coping with that <laughs> and they're all handling the rest of that sort of stuff. I'm like, this is so wild. How did we do this? Um, but actually novice helped me prepare for that movie because I spent the majority of the movie squatting because I, I, I had to walk around and learn how to walk like basically in a squat because I'm taller than you know right. the average 10 year old so <laughs> that 
I don't know. I know some pretty tall 10 year olds out there. Um, uh, uh, Lauren, um, you know, in, in perusing your, your sound credits and stuff, I, I saw that you worked on, on Justice League and, and the Snyder Cut. And I'm curious what you made of like the, the online discourse surrounding that project and, and whether you think it'll lead to more director's cuts in the future. Um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, this is a good question. And I just read the other day, I was reading some kind of Buzzfeed 20 film stories you couldn't believe. And, you know, I, I read the thing again about the Sonic character that they redid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And I think, you know, in the age of social media and, and all these different things, the fan base, you know, it's just, it's just such a different world. I think it's going to become more prevalent. I mean, I don't know. I was, I was surprised. I worked on it. I started working on Justice League in 2016 at the time Zach was, uh, was on it and then he you know we the reshoots happened with Joss and then the movie came out and then the fanboys did their thing and then I get a call this past summer and like we're gonna do Justice League again we want you back to do the 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 what I couldn't I couldn't believe it honestly I didn't think it was gonna work because I you know I was watching the the reddit the, the fanboys doing all this thing and I was like never in a million years but it worked and the Sonic thing worked and so I don't know if that's a Good. I mean, I think for the, the Snyder Cut, it's a great thing. I don't know if in general and in, the, in the, the Sonic film, it, it turned out better and everyone was really happy with it. So maybe it's a good thing. It's also a little terrifying. So uh, right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the world. Right. It, 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 I imagine it's scary being a filmmaker and being now accountable to social media and, and they have a voice in the process, it almost feels like, at some of these places. Yeah. Um, okay, we have just a few more minutes left. Uh, Isabel, I wanted to ask you, since you started in the movie Cell, I'm curious if you have a favorite Stephen King book or adaptation. You know, what's funny is for someone who's done a lot of scary movies, I don't read scary books and I do not watch scary movies. So I can't honestly answer that. <laughs> I have the first Stephen King movie that, I mean, book that I read was that one. And I was like, I have to read it, do research and... Uh, yeah, but I, I really, I met Stephen King and I think he's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I'd love to read one of his books. But I just don't really like scary stuff. You, <laughs> we got to find you one like, you know, the, the Stand By Me novella or Shawshank Redemption or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Delone, as you continue to make a name for yourself as an actress, what kind of roles are you hoping to be offered? And, and is there like an actress's career path you'd like to emulate? Yeah, I mean, I love... Uh, Zoe Zaldana's career. Um, I really am into like sci-fi. I got to do drama for The Novice. Um, I got to play something more relatable in fashion for Halston. And then I'm, I've also done, um, I have a supporting role for something um, that Mindy Kaling uh, is doing called Sex Lives of College Girls, which I got to experience like the comedy side of things. And that for me was so exciting. We were laughing so much on set. And honestly, I, I want, I would love to do more of that. And then also, you know, I had to audition um, uh, for doing The Novice. Um, I had to audition singing for this part. And actually, you know, you got, they ended up picking up one of my songs that I wrote with my friend, Nigel. So doing more roles where I get to explore like being an artist in that way too. I think would be a lot of fun. I yeah. think you'd make a great, you know, just watching you in, in this movie, I think, kind of think you'd make a, ba a badass action star, like in an alien or predator movie or something. Here's I want to watch you in a sci-fi movie so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, now, Isabel, I understand you're also like uh, writing a movie yourself titled Princess. I'm curious, you know, uh, what inspired oh my you? To, I don't, is that an old thing that's on your <laughs> That was so long ago. I wrote okay. I, when I was, I've been writing for a very long time, but I wrote an adaptation of A Little Princess when I was like, oh. I'd say 12, 13. Um, and we were going to make it for a time. Um, and I think financing was going up and down. And then I, aged out of it and then because I wrote it and I wanted to do it it just kind of like fell apart and it's funny it's still I know it's still on IMDb which is hilarious uh, but I am I am I currently that's part of the reason why I'm traveling is I'm doing research for a project that I'm writing and for a documentary film that I'm putting together so okay. I am yeah I'm re crea creating my own stuff and I'm gonna I'm gonna create a sci-fi movie for you Delone I want to see I want to see you in a sci-fi movie yeah <laughs> uh, that's all I was getting at is whether you had writing and directing aspirations of your own. Um, and then, and then finally, uh, Lauren, I don't know, I, I, this, this project is just coming out and you get to enjoy the big Tribeca debut and everything, but have you started thinking what's next for you? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm doing revisions on a, a lesbian sex comedy right now that I wrote during a, before the summer before we shot Novice in the middle real time as I was going through a breakup and it was my catharsis for that. <laughs> and uh, so I'm doing that and I, uh, I moved to, to Paris. I started learning French as a pandemic hobby um, and it sort of snowballed when I realized I wasn't gonna be able to go to Paris last summer. I decided, oh, I, just, I guess I'm just going to move there and live there instead. So now I live here and I hope, you know, hopefully can, um, I'm trying to get involved with the French film industry here and writing a project and my French is not where it needs to be, but I love for a year, I only watched French films and TV shows um, and fell in love with French culture more than I already had. And so I hope one day, maybe project three, uh, it can make something out here. That'd be great. Her, by the way, for the record, her French is so good. Her friend is really It is very good. It is way better than she thinks it is. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, the, the team behind The Novice debuting at Tribeca Film Festival. Make sure to check it out. Uh, and thank everyone. Thank you all for joining me. Good luck thank with the you. film.